thinking caps, heart caps. Here we go. Oh, sorry, I should slow down. Whoa, 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 whoa. So if you have listened to me talk, once you've probably heard me talk about C.S. Lewis. If you, twice, you know that I love C.S. Lewis. Three times, I probably have talked too much about C.S. Lewis. I said, almost said St. C.S. Lewis, oh my gosh. Um, so one of the things that I love about C.S. Lewis is his ability to cut through complicated topics or take complicated realities and distill them and make them super accessible. One of the things I remember C.S. Lewis talking about, I might have even made another video about this, is he talked about his own experience when it came to the virtue of faith before he was a believer in Christ, before he even believed in God. He said, Christians would talk, would talk about how faith is a virtue. And he thought, he said, how could faith be a virtue? Because if you believe that something is true, then why is that virtuous to continue to believing it? Like, so if I know that two, and two plus two is four is true, then it's not virtuous for me to believe it. It's simply, it's simply true. I'm simply being honest when I believe that. And then he said, as a Christian, I re realized, oh, faith is more than just mind. It's more than just the intellect. It's more than just knowing the truth. One of the things we realize is the gift of faith doesn't just hit our intellect. The gift of faith and the virtue of faith has to also exercise not merely our intellect. It exercises our heart. It exercises our desire. It exercises so many parts of us. In fact, it exercises, it exercises? is that the right word? I don't even know. It, it uses the whole self. In fact, the gift of faith is not merely intellectual assent to a truth, but it's trust in that, that, that reality of it's trust with my heart, with my, with my desires. So here's what I mean. Uh, the ancient Greek philosophers would talk about the three transcendentals, truth, goodness, and beauty. So truth, truth goodness, and beauty. So the mind is made to apprehend truth. The heart uh, longs for goodness and we love beauty. So we, we know, apprehend truth, we desire goodness and we love beauty. That, that's kind of the, this reality, right? And so we realize that if something is true, if it's one of those transcendentals, it has to also be good and beautiful. It, it shares in these, again, the kind of the reality of these three, three transcendentals and each of them hit a different part of the human person. We know as according to our Catholic anthropology that human beings are body and soul, but we're also, we have an intellect, we have a will, you know, we have, we have an imagination, we have all these aspects of ourselves and every one of them needs to be in line in with uh, corresponding to the truth, to the good and to the beauty, beautiful, to the truth, the good and beautiful in order to be like fully human. Why am I saying all this? Because go back to C.S. Lewis. He had said that if something is true, I know it's intellectually true, I know this is verifiably true, um, then to live like that is not a virtue. It's simply, well, <laughs> living out two plus two is four. But then he realized that as a Christian though, as a human being, I can know something is true, but want something else, right? I can know something is true, but I can also be attracted and drawn to something that is less than beautiful or other than good or distortion of the good. And so it takes not merely an intellectual assent, it also takes the surrender of the heart that's one of the reasons why, gosh, you know, it's so often people say like, follow your heart. And I remember it said, no, don't follow your heart because your heart is often wrong. Lead your heart. And that's in fact what we want to do. We want our intellect and our will to, to lead that, that, that heart that we have. What do I mean? Think about someone like Solomon. So Solomon in the Old Testament is known as the wisest of all the people who ever, who ever walked the face of the earth. In fact, when he was younger, he asked God for the gift of wisdom and he was given the gift of wisdom. But at the end of his life, the story reveals, it says, as Solomon grew old, his many wives turned his heart to other gods. So again, he's a guy, here's a guy who knew the truth. He knew the truth about the one God, the God who set the people of Israel free from slavery in Egypt, the one God who, who continued to guide him, the one God who gave him actually the gift of wisdom. He knew that God, but what happened? He gave his heart, he gave his desires over to things that were less than beautiful, things that were less than good, and that twisted his heart and his whole self followed. That Solomon, he ends it, he starts his life so well. He starts his life so, doing so, doing good, living wisely, and he ends his life in catastrophe. Why? As he grew old, his many wives turned his heart to false gods. His head, his intellect still knew there is one God, but his desires, his imagination, his appetites were distorted and they led his heart 
They led his mind, they led, his app, they led him away from the true God. And this is the same thing for, uh, for us. It's one of the, one of the reasons why, as, as like human formation, as, as a formation as, as Catholic Christians, as disciples of Jesus, so good about like studying the truth. We need to, we need to continue to, to continually learn how we, what is it that we believe? You know, why do we believe these things? How can I live these things out? But we also have to form our heart. We have to also have to, to form, fashion our imagination. What is it that I love? Like, what is it that I feed myself? No, not just intellectually, because I can watch a TV show, I can listen to a song and say, well, no, no, I know that that's not true. But I also notice that the more and more I expose myself to things that are distortions of beauty or distortions of goodness, the more people I surround myself with, the more things I love that are, are not truly good or truly beautiful, the more my heart is given over to that which is not truly good or not truly beautiful. And the less than my intellect is able to apprehend and guide my heart and guide my, my, my choices. This is one of the reasons why it's so important that we're, you know, I don't want to say on guard, but we're on guard. I mean, because I don't want to be like one of those alarmist kind of people who say, you guys, watch what you watch and be careful of what you listen to. Although I got to say, we have to watch what we watch. We have to be careful what we listen to. Why? Because again, I might intellectually might say, I know where this is wrong. I know where this is false. I know where this is not good. And I'm above all those things because I understand with my intellect. But the whole time I'm feeding my appetite, the whole time I'm distorting and twisting my heart and beginning to love things that are not worth my heart. And this is the thing for all of us. We can find ourselves in a place where we have trained ourselves to love things that are not worth our hearts. That they're, they're maybe in and, of them, in and of themselves good, but twisted. Or maybe even the absence of good. Maybe again, a complete distortion of good. Or maybe again, they're not, they're not beautiful, but they simply have the hint of beauty or maybe the, the, the after effect, the mirage of beauty. And we have to ask ourselves that question, what am I feeding my heart? What am I feeding my appetite? Because maybe more than anything else, in this day and age, we, know we, don't, we don't think necessarily super clearly, but we feel so strongly. If that's going to be the case, then we need to be very, very intentional about what we feed our hearts, what we feed our appetites. Because the good has the power to lead us to good. The beauty has the power to lift us up to the beautiful. But the distortion of the good has the power to distort our hearts. And the distortion of the beautiful has the power to mislead our hearts to a place where we're walking where there is no truth. So, here's my invitation for all of us. I mean, again, it's, 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 we, have to be, we have to be vigilant because we walk in a world where there's a lot of not truth stuff, right? Where there's a lot of mistruths, untruths, a lot of lies. There's also a lot of beauty that's been distorted. There's a lot of goodness that's been twisted. And so we just have to say, okay, Lord, please, let me seek out and choose and fill myself, fill my mind, fill my imagination, fill my heart. Let me desire that which is true, that which is good, and that which is beautiful. And if we don't do that, we're going to distort our heart and our mind and our appetites. And it's not going to lead us closer to Christ. In fact, it's going to make us less than who we're called to be. I don't know, this seems like a really kind of a downer kind of a video maybe, but at the same time, it's so urgent and so important that we actually put this into effect because we're not merely minds, we're not merely intellects. If we was, I'd just say, okay, X is true. Jesus Christ is God. Done. I'll live like that. We also have hearts that need to choose him and need to choose against evil. We have appetites that need to choose him and choose against ugliness. So, that's my invitation. Here we are in this moment. Uh, gosh, be a saint. I'm just encouraging all of us and myself too because saints not only know the truth, they, they love the beautiful and they choose the good. Um, anyways, from all of us here to Ascension Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.